Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode three of the Serenity Fibers podcast. Returning viewers, thank you for joining me again. And newcomers, thank you for checking me out. All right, we're going to go right into it. Uh, I haven't podcasted in a while. Things have been extremely busy. Of course, so many things have happened, um, such as school's out, kids are home. It's a busy season for me for my other part-time job. So I have just been doing this, doing that, dying when I can, knitting when I can, and spinning when I can. But we'll get into that a little later and show you what I have done and what I'm planning to do. But first thing is shop updates and the new colors, colorways that I have come out with and also a new base that I am providing for the shop. All right, first colorway is Purple People Eater. Now, um, I got purple. <laughs> I got purple. Look at this pretty purple. I've been really wanting to do a really nice pretty purple for a while now. And I love this colorway. All right, so I have two in the Merino Sock base, which is 7525 Superwash Merino and 25% um, nylon with 463 yards. Now this is fingering weight yarn. This is pur Purple People Eater. It is interesting. <clears throat> I have purple with black speckles. And let me see if I could get you a good view of some yellow because of course purple people eater has a yellow horn and so i was trying to incorporate some yellow into this let's see if i could get if you could see it it's a little bit a little bit's there i really love this colorway i i look at it and i want a sweater a very bright purple sweater that's that's what i want that's what i think about when i think about this yarn but here you go, Purple People Eater in Marina Sock, 463 yards. It's gorgeous. I love this colorway. This is an, a, another base that I am providing for the shop. It is Merino Worsted. It is a worsted weight yarn. It has 218 yards of 100% superwash merino and I love this I, I love how soft and how squishy this worsted weight yarn is and I want to make myself a sweater with this yarn I'm going to I just have to figure out which which colors I want to do if it's really gonna be the purple people eater or if it's not but here you go purple people eater in merino worsted See if I could get you some speckling action there. Alright, here's the other one. I just love this colorway. I love how it turned out. And I love this yarn base. It is it is so squishy and it's so soft. Alright. Now, the other base that I, or the other uh, colorway I want to show you, one is in a uh, Merino Silky Singles, which was a 70-30, 70% Superwash Merino, 30% Silk. And this colorway is going to be, it took me a little while to figure out the colorway name, but I'm going to call it Underwater Garden. And it is a light green blue with speckles of blue and purple. And I love how this colorway turned out on this base. Of course, the silk in this con and, and this yarn, the silk content in this yarn has just done wonders with the blue and the green and of course the speckling love the speckling on this 
All right, now I do have this same colorway in the Merino Sock Base, which is the 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon. It It's interesting how different bases and different fibers will take up the same dye. So this is dyed, <laughs> same batch everything, but of course it is a lot darker because it does have the, just the Merino and Nylon. And you can see, still beautiful but the silk of course makes those colors shine and just it just shines and of course there's no silk in here so it's a lot darker but same colors same speckles the blue and purple there's the other scheme Beautiful, beautiful colorway in the Merino Sock. There you go. Now the next colorway, it is called Remember Me Not on Merino Silky Singles, the 7030 um, Superwash Merino in Silky Single, or in Silk, <laughs> on a single ply yarn. And this is Remember Me Not. It's a beautiful, just, Fuchsia pink. Love the color. Love, love, love the color. As I've been saying, I've been getting into pinks, mauvey, antique, rose pinks, and such like that. I, I tend to gravitate towards, or the uh, the pinks that actually speak to me are. The beautiful mauvey pinks, mauvey roses, or even just kind of like a fuchsia pink rose that's not too extremely bright and hot pink, but can still be bright like this, but not hot, hot pink and not bubblegum pink. So kind of in the middle somewhere. But this is Remember Me Not, and I have two skeins of that. Just love, love how this color turned out. It's just beautiful. All right. The next colorway I did was Blush Me Up. It is a self-striping yarn, and I was playing with actual pinks, of course which we got different kinds of pinks, um, bubblegum pink, which this is a lot lighter than what the camera is showing you at the moment. Let's see if we can get something a little bit more true to color. There we go. We have the bubblegum pink and it goes up and there's a little darker. Then it goes really to this mauvey blush, darker blush. And then it goes to a more mauvey purplish color. And then it goes right back again. And let me go and unskein this for you so you can actually see. I love how this one turned out. It is beautiful. Um, like I said, I don't like bubblegum pink, especially for me. I can appreciate the color, but I still love how these pinks go, or these pinks are. So, of course, you're going to get this bubblegum pink for most of the skein. And then it's going to go to get a little darker, get a little richer, and then to this nice rosy color. And then you'll get into the antique-ish mauve. And then right back again, gradually, until you get to the bubblegum pink. I love this scheme, really love it. All right, the next self-strapping yarn that I did, I am calling Heard It Through the Grapevine. And of course, as you can see why, it is, it, it's, it's 
Like some grapes on a vine. <laughs> Got purple. We have the brown. We also have different shades of green, which is the mossy green and a lighter green. Uh, yellowish green. And this is also going to be a self-striping yarn when you knit it up. Most of most of the uh, half of the skein is going to be purple. This nice great purple that you see. And then as you're knitting, you'll get into moss green and then of course the lighter light green and a very nice deep rich brown that has a little bit little bit of purple in it which you can't really tell here but it's a beautiful brown i love this brown and then of course back to the light green mossy green and then right back to the purple and this one is of course on the merino sock base just like blush me up was is also on the merino sock base which is 463 yards this one is also merino sock 463 yards perfect for socks i'm really loving this color loving this color all right now the last pair of um colorways a mystery colorway as i've said i believe it was in my first episode where i um, give you the information where when I do my dye sessions I save any leftover dye either dye particles dye powder or even because I make a dye stock or a dye solution dye stock um, and I accumulate all the dye that I do in each section sometimes I go and put it in one jar sometimes I mix it with another jar sometimes I keep it all in one jar depending on how much I'm dying and how much dye is left over well with this one this is what I got and it's a beautiful beautiful teal color I love it this one I did make into a semi-solid solid colorway and you can't really see it so much here but most of the skein is just variations in subtle, subtle tones of this teal color. And as you'll see, most of it's this color. Then you'll get into some, you'll get some spots where it's a little darker, a darker blue. Here and there. See, see over here. And then some will be a little bit lighter teal. And here's another one. So I would like the mystery colorway, but as you can see right over here, you have a little bit of a lighter color. A little darker right over here. But I love this teal. I love this teal. It actually makes me want to go and dye some nice chocolate brown. I don't know. I love teal and brown together. Like like pink. I love pink and brown together. I don't know why. I, they look good. They look pleasing. Um, but yeah, teal and brown together, I love. But beautiful teal. There's two skeins of this. It'll be go up as a mystery colorway. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. I'm thinking something along the lines of ocean waters, teal water, something like that. Uh, but it will be under my uh, mystery colorway section. All right, we'll go to the next sec section of the podcast. Probably go and do the things that I finished first so you could go and see what I've done lately. It has been extremely busy lately. Um, it's really just a change. Uh, kids are out of school. It, it, even though it feels as if it should be easier, it's just I guess it's more the change of a different kind of schedule. Um, since kids are not going to school, I actually get to wake up a little later than I usually have to, um, because I don't have to go and rush and get them to school and you know breakfast and school 
you know, breakfast before they have to go to school. Uh, so I get to go and wake up a little bit later. It's quite, it's been quite nice, quite nice. Uh, but other than that, we've been doing a lot of things since it's summer. And the really great thing that we've been doing, me and the family have been doing lately, is our town has a, once a week has a free concert that's outside. And of course they have um, food trucks and other restaurants that would like to go and sell food there and such. And every week they do a different genre. Uh, the very first day that we went, or the first time that we went, was a tribute to Pink. And of course my 13 year old, uh, all the girls loved it. My 13 year old loved it as well. So me and my husband and all the three girls went and enjoyed eating food to some music outside. It was hot, but it was wonderful, especially when the sun came, went down. It was wonderfully nice. Um, kids enjoyed themselves. They loved it. They were dancing everywhere. Me and my husband loved taking the kids out. It was something new, something we haven't done. Um, but, you know, in the hustle and bustle of everything, it's nice to go and do something with the family. So I haven't done as much knitting as I would like to, but I've been, I've been doing stuff, so we'll see. Okay, so the first thing that I have finished are my socks. My, I did a, a double gusset socks, which it was a technique that I, I've been, I, I just stumbled across it, across it in, um, in Ravelry. And there was a lady who did a free pattern out I forgot her name. I should remember her name. I'll go and look it up and either put it in the show notes be down below. She did a free um, pattern on how to do uh, double gussets and it was really interesting. I really wanted to learn how to do it because I've never done double gussets before and she mentioned that the reason why she was doing double gussets is for self-striping socks so that you don't you can continuously do uh, the stripes. The stripes won't be marred or warped or look weird. Um, so I tried them. Uh, I love the technique. I was, uh, I was, a, I didn't know if the, okay, so <laughs> let me just show you first and then I'll explain. So here are the socks, the double the gusset socks. And as you can see, I did um, it, uh, the socks in a, in a self-striping yarn. And let's see if we can, if I could get a good, these, this right here is the gussets right over here. It's basically increases. That's all it is. It, I mean, of course, when you do socks, there's increases right over here. And, but instead, you're doing decreases on the bottom. I was a little wary that the increases would be uncomfortable when I had the mom and feet and I was walking on them, but they're not, um, which I'm very glad. And while you're wearing your socks, you don't see the double gussets, which is really nice when you want to really show off the self-striping pattern. So you don't have the increases that you're doing for your gussets right over here. Um, which I loved. I, I loved this. I, I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. It just seems like it was a no-brainer, but it's interesting what things you find when you're just searching and aimlessly looking at stuff on Ravelry, I guess. I don't know. But, so... I really love the socks. I really love the double gusset socks. I'm really pleased with them. They fit like a dream. Um, the The base of the yarn is nice and stretchy. It is, uh, ooh, where did I, okay. I got it from the, the Knitting Rose Yarns. I believe I actually got this at a fiber festival some years ago. I can't remember. It has to be at least two to three years. I've been hanging on to this ball of yarn for a while trying to figure out what do I want to do. do I? And of course when I saw the good double gusset pattern I was like let's use it for that. And it's sparkly so I could have sparkle feet when I'm walking around the house. 
and that's wonderful. This is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% stellina. Sorry, I'm thinking faster than my mouth, and so my mouth is slowly following. <laughs> it is 100 grams, 438 yards. Um, the colorway, or the base is Tinky Tweets, and the colorway is a muck, a muck, a muck. So um, I'm loving the base, loving the base, the yarn base. It is stretchy, it's wonderful, perfect for socks as well. It's a two ply, so it, that was the other reason why I was a little bit weary, uh, or uh, weary of making these as socks because. I don't know. It was always one of these things that if you're going to make socks, you you go with a three, four ply yarn. You don't stick with a two ply yarn. I don't think I've ever made socks in a two ply yarn. Um, these will be my first. So we'll see how the wear and tear are. But of course, I usually don't use my socks to go to work in or go out in. Um, most of my socks are for the house to go and wear because... I don't know if I've ever mentioned, even though I live in Texas, I am always cold. Always cold. Um, my my feet are like icicles, my husband says. Um, it, I'm always cold. So I like to wear socks around the house and to bed and such like that. So um, we'll see how these wear and tear and see if I go and ever do socks in a two-ply yarn again so we'll see but I really like the outcome of my double gussets I'll probably be using this technique a little bit more often um, in different types of patterns and yarns and different heel types as well just to see how it goes um, and it's, since it's so easy to do the double gussets it's very very easy I might even do like a little tutorial a little later um, down the road down the pipeline on how to do double gussets because it is so easy it's, it's a no-brainer and I am actually kicking myself on, on on why didn't I think of this before why you know it's one of those things where it's just like ah you, you when you get it you get it and you're like why why didn't I think of this before but maybe I'll go and do a tutorial on these because they are so simple. It's simple, simple, simple on how to do double gussets. And I am so happy that I've learned the technique that I just want to go and share with everybody. And kudos to the designer, the lady who put the free pattern on Ravelry. It, you can search it up. It is double gusset socks. So this is one of my finished objects. The other finished thing that I've done is a spin, and it was um, after, I think I showed you in my last episode, but I also did a spin diary on the spin that I was doing, which was a, um, a, a combo spin, predominantly had a lot of the spinning box fibers on it. And, you know, I finished with that one, and I've been prepping for another type of spin, or another similar spin um, with spinning box fibers but in the interim I wanted to go and brush up on my spinning from the fold so I picked one of the Kamach fibers the lady who does the spinning boxes I was looking through the boxes and I picked some of her fibers because of course her fibers are perfect for spinning through uh, spinning over the fold technique and I did the very first fiber, very first box that I had gotten, which was the Boho Spice or Boho Theme, which was December 2017 spinning box. And this is, I believe, 100% Corydale. Yes, it's 100% Corydale in the Boho Spice colorway. And I spun this whole entire thing with uh, spinning over the fold, which I had not done before. I had not done before. I had learned the technique. I only did a little sample of it because I wanted to learn the technique, but I didn't do a whole scheme. 
using this, this technique. So this is the very first time that I did it. I've done it. And I love the colors. I love how it turned out. It brushed me up on the technique and I did it enough to really get the technique down. So there you go, Boho Spice. Um, I forgot to ca I forgot to write down how many yards I got, um, or even check out the weight. But I would imagine this is around DK weight. I know it's bigger than, or thicker than, um, uh, fingering weight yarn. And I, I, if I'm going off the top of my memory, I think it was around two hundred and sixty yards, give or take. Um. So I'm not sure what I'm thinking about doing for this. I was actually thinking about a hat, doing a matching hat combo um, for my girls. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. All right. So the other thing that I am doing, or uh, those are my two finished objects, actually, my, my socks and the spin that I've done. As I said, again, I've, I've been pretty busy. I've not had enough a lot of time to go and do a lot of knitting um but i've been a little bad and i had a little bit of castellanitis um so it, it, the one thing that i uh told you i believe even in episode one maybe episode one maybe episode two i'm not exactly sure but it was um cups that i was doing for my um boss on my other job and I feel really bad but then I don't I haven't made a lot of progress or as much progress as I know I can with these cuffs um one because I keep on talking telling myself he doesn't need them right now <laughs> he doesn't need them right now it's not cold you know, I have all the way until the fall to go and get them done. So, and they, and they're a quick knit. So it's not going to take a lot of time to go and get them done. And then of course I made a mistake on the brioche. So this is what I have gotten done. Okay. It, it's, it's, you know, pretty long and I've only done the one. I haven't gotten to the second. Um, it's, it's actually... It's a, it's a little bit bigger than the last time I showed you, but I've only done like maybe a few rows on it. So it is, it is, it is longer than the last time you saw it. Um, but I did a few mistakes or a couple mistakes on it. I think it was only two where I guess I wasn't paying attention and I accidentally did a knit where I needed to do a purl or a purl where I needed to do a knit. So... I have one over there and I had another one I had another one somewhere too it was actually pretty early on and I've been looking at it for a while thinking hmm do I leave it in do I not do I leave it out I mean I'm not the one who's gonna wear it so it's not gonna bug me too much um, but it bugs me now and usually, you know, little mistakes don't bug me. Um, usually I get to dangle it to the point where it's not very noticeable. And if it's not very noticeable, I, I'm okay with it. Unless it's extremely noticeable and that's when I'm just like, I, I gotta frog it, I gotta rip it back, I, you know, I gotta fix it somehow. And, and there's a lot of times that I can not frog it out and I can um, basically let the yarn run and drop the stitch and then go and fix it all the way up the row uh, if it's a very easy pattern to do. Um, I'm not so confident in brioche that I'll be able to do that. Because um, I was thinking about it, but I was like, oh, what happens if I don't get it correct? And it then it's just worse than it was, you know. So I might just do these things all over again if it, if it continues to bug me. 
If it doesn't, then I'll just keep on going and slowly make progress on it because I, I have no doubt that in the next, let's say, four months, I will talk myself into casting on something else after I finish the stuff that I have here. Um, just because I guess that's just how I roll. I figure I have time to get these done. He doesn't need them now, so I will probably convince myself to go and knit something else before I finish these. But it, it's beautiful. I love it. I love the brioche. I love the inside, the outside. It's looking wonderful. So that's another work in progress. Or that's the first work in progress. The next thing that I started was something that I was um, uh, wanting to do for a while. I actually dyed some fiber uh, some time ago, long, long time ago. I think it was actually even last year. Um, I've been trying to, and it took me a few tries because I have a friend who used to be a co-worker of mine. Um, who loves burgundy. She loves burgundy. She's um, She has blonde blue eyes and burgundy is her color. She loves burgundy. It looks great on her. And I've been, uh, this was in the very early stages of, of me dyeing. Dyeing fiber, dyeing yarn, dyeing different techniques, using different colors. And so for months I have been trying to uh, mix the right shade of burgundy that I wanted for her, the, what I had pictured in my mind. And it, it took a few attempts and I knitted some things out of, out of the yarn because it wasn't the correct burgundy that I was looking for. But um, eventually I got the correct kind of burgundy that I had in mind for her. And I wanted to go and make her either a shawl or a cow out of the yarn that I spun for her. Something nice that she could just wrap around her head that she could go out in that was nice and comfy but um, still elegant uh, so that she could go out in. So this is the burgundy that I did and it's actually a lot redder here than it is in person. Let's see, that's, that's a little bit closer to the actual color, but it is beautiful. I spun it as a single um, because I really liked how it, how it was looking as a single. Um, I got almost, almost 600 yards from this. Um, so it took me a little while. The reason why it's taken me so long to even cast on for this, uh, project or this object is because after I dyed it, after I spun it, it sat for a while because I was looking for the right pattern to knit for her. Um, I had a few uh, patterns that I was looking at, but they just didn't quite fit, I guess. They, yeah, they just didn't quite fit. And I ran across uh, this one pattern that uh, is called the Northern Lights stole from Annie uh, Ann Ann Lise Maygard or Annie Lise Maygard Ann Lise Maygard but she created this pattern it's called Northern Light Stole and I, I just I fell in love with it because I love stoles I love stoles I love stoles they're just big scars and I love them so um knitting her the Northern Light Stole and I'm also adding beads to this. And it also took me a while to figure out, do I want white beads? Do I want really shiny beads? Do I want something that's a little bit more subtle? Do I want it to blend in with the burgundy? Do I want it to stand out? Um, and so I'm going with white clear with um, clear beads with like a pearly, almost kind of shiny pearlescence. They're a little shiny. Not too much, not too little, you know, not blaring in your face, but not 
to the point where you have to get up really close to to even notice that there is beads in here but this is what I've done so far and of course this this um this colorway is a um, tonal semi-solid color that's how I spun it because I wanted to see the light and dark of the of the burgundy I wanted the color to flow when I knit this up so I've done I've done a little bit of progress with this um I was doing I was knitting this a lot at the beginning and um um I got onto another I cast it on for another project that I was just kind of dying to go and cast on uh but that one's actually going to take it's not going to take very much longer it's it, it will kind of but it won't um and then most likely I'll go right back to this one um because I really want to get this finished for her I really really want to get this finished for her and I'm really loving um I'm, it's a really nice uh, pattern. It's 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 flowing pretty nicely, pretty nicely. It's it, the pattern's well written. The graphs are or the charts graphs. The charts are <laughs> well written. Um, so it's going good. I'll go and show you how it progresses. I love my my little stitch markers I made. Here is oh. I can't even see his face because he's turned around the other way. But here are my skull stitch markers. I like to go and give these as little, you know, prizes and presents uh, for the people who either uh, win giveaways from me or order from me. I do all kinds of little stitch markers and such like that. Um, nice fun ones. Pretty ones that say handmade or I love to knit and such like that but I had to go and grab these ones for myself because of course they're green and purple and they looked awesome together so I just yeah now this project is also uh, it's hanging out in my yarn bowl Noah that's his name Noah he's my yarn bowl I love my yarn bowl my father got it for me for um, it was my birthday or was it Christmas uh, it was two years ago it was my birthday. It was my birthday. And let's see. I do you have the business card? Um, the Art of Lucky Stradley, Lucky 13. He goes and makes these yarn bowls. And I believe he also makes other things, um, cups and stuff like that. And he names them. And um, let's see. I have his business card right here this is what came with the yarn bowl and I really like his work I really like his work um, I really love my yarn bowl it's it is wonderful I love that it's interesting and unique and I believe like no two yarn bowls are the same from my understanding um, but yeah this is Noah my yarn bowl and he names them himself. I know. It's wonderful. Look, he was uh he was born January 29, 2016 in Hubble. There you go. That's my yarn bowl. And I love him. He's awesome. Yep. Okay, so that is the other current or the other whip that I am currently working on. And the last thing that I am knitting is a thing that I've, I've been dying to knit for a while. And um, I just, I gave in and I started knitting it. Or I started actually, it took me a little while to figure out what I wanted to do with it, what pattern I wanted to do, the stitch pattern I wanted to do. So I uh, took a while, researched my st stitches. Um, I was trying to find a, a stitch pattern that was going to be fluffy, uh, squishy, was going to be nice and thick, nothing that was going to be lace because I didn't want any holes. I mean, when I imagined this yarn, which was the yarn that I spun, 
I just, I just had to. I, I had to go and, I had to go and make something. So I mean, it's, it's, I still have a good. It's nice and squishy. I love this yarn. <laughs> um, but um, so I researched. I, I needed a stitch pattern that was nice and squishy, uh, thick, and just really accentuated the the squishiness of the yarn, the smoosh factor. And because I wanted this to be something that I could wear in the dead of winter, um, of course, yeah, Texas dead of winter is a couple hours sometimes each day. <laughs> but we get some cold days, we get ice, we don't get a lot of snow, we get ice everywhere. But I wanted to be able to go home, you know, wrap it around my neck and just feel the warmth when it's cold. So, um, did a whole big, big swatch with samples of stitch patterns and of course nothing would would do nothing was grabbing me nothing was squishy and and had that smush factor on it um you know and then I, I kept on knitting and just doing a plain stockinette stitch which you know it was nice because it showed off the colors of the yarn you know but it, it didn't have that nice squish factor to it that I wanted. I mean, the yarn was is pretty squishy on its own anyways, and that was wonderful. But the stitch pattern, or none of the stitch patterns were accentuating and, and doing the squishiness of the yarn justice. So I went right back to brioche um, because that lent squishiness to my project. And as I told you last time, I'm on a brioche kick right now, so I figured, hey, let's just continue down that path. Um, so, what I did was garter on the bottom for the rib. Um, I was a little concerned about doing it, just making sure that I would have enough stretch on my borders. Um, but I, I did it pretty loosely, did a loose cast on, so it's working out so far and it's okay. I mean, if it doesn't stretch as much as the brioche, because I do want it to hold its shape. And of course this portion or, you know, one of the edges is going to go around my shoulders and I want it to kind of snug a little bit and not lose its shape. So I'm fine with that. Uh, and then I did a coarse brioche and even though it's not a two color brioche um, I did brioche and as you can see this is one of the uh, the um, the add-ins that I did uh, when I was spinning uh, the colors that I really wanted to pop out um, and that's one of them as you can see we'll see more of them when we when, you know as I'm knitting um, really loving how it's going it's, I, I did actually uh, bandy about the idea of making it a two color brioche because um, I'm kind of worried that I might not get the length out of this cowl as I, I didn't even let you tell you that it's it's going to be a cow. It's a cow like my original plan. I wanted it to be a cow, but I, I did kind of play with the idea of making it a two color brioche um, because I was a little worried. It, that this wouldn't provide me with enough or the length that I was imagining it would um, but I decided you know it's okay I'll be happy with what I have so that's why I decided not to do the two color brioche and just just do brioche for the texture and the feel and the squish factor of my project so here it is again I'm showing you I am loving knitting this. It's going by so fast. I didn't want it to be very long. I wanted it to basically fit around my shoulders, be a little bit loose around my shoulders, but not too loose. Um, I'm not gonna decrease it as I go up. Um, I'm gonna keep it one length. I had thought about decreasing it so it does get smaller. So, you know, but I'm not gonna do that because it will drive me insane that I, I I like easy garments. I like just to go and throw it on and it be, I, I love scarves that are reversible, that the pattern is reversible. So it looks good on both sides. 
and I don't want to have to think very much when I need to go out the door as I you know you know I have kids sometimes I'm in a rush in the morning uh, sometimes I believe I have an hour and a half and or hour and a half I have plenty of time to get everybody ready and in essence I do but then of course we have kids who want this want that one minute they're clean, next minute they're not, and you have to go and take a last minute bath or have them take a last minute bath when you're expecting time to go and give them a bath. So sometimes I'm in a rush when I'm going out the door and I don't wanna to have to think very much about my accessories. I wanna be able to put them on and go. So I, I, it, this suits me, this, this is wonderful and does great. So I am happy to knit it I am loving and enjoying it. I can't wait till it's finished because I want to see how it looks and I want to wear it. And good heavens, you probably will never hear me say this again, but I'm looking towards forward to winter so I can wear this. So I have a reason to wear this because I don't like the cold. Hence why I live in Texas. But. Um, other than that, those are my works in progress. I'm going to go and add the things. Um, there are other things that are kind of a work in progress. It's really more that I need to weave in the ends. I tend to not weave in ends until I have a few projects that I've already finished. And then when I'm just like, ugh, I have a stack of stuff that I have not weaved the ends. In and I need to do that before I do anything else and those are the things that I'm gonna do which um, the very first project which I completed years ago okay so this is one of the ones that I have not weaved in the ends in I, I think I finished these like a year or two ago and I've not worn them I've been admiring them I love them um, but I haven't weaved in the ends, so I haven't worn them so fingerless gloves I got um, Dream in Color. Ooh, let's see. Dream in Color. Mm. Smushy. With cashmere. It's not really focusing, but it's Dream in Color. Smushy with cashmere. Sock weight yarn. 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Um, in the Take a Hike colorway, which is dyed exclusively for the Loopy U, which I got this from the Loopy U. I love Loopy U. I actually, um, if you haven't, uh, uh, if you haven't had the pleasure in experiencing the Loopy U, I highly recommend going to their store or even the online s shop. They do all kinds of things on Ravelry um, not even not even knit alongs they do a camp during the summer which I, I did not do this summer be just because I've been so busy that I haven't been able to really dedicate time to go and do things but I did go and do their camp Luby their camp um, two year two years ago two summers ago I believe and I loved it loved it um, and I want to do it again um, but, uh, they also do things, or they started doing things year-round as well during the school sessions, or school sessions, um, fall, winter, and spring. Um, and I believe it's a school that they do something that you, you, you do things every month. But I have not been able to go and do any of that either because I've been so, uh, doing a whole bunch of other things. But you should go. I, I actually found Loopy U when me and my husband went on vacation to Colorado. We were actually going to be, my husband was going to be transferred there and then um, the transferred, the transfer was halted uh, a few days before we went. We took a week there to go and finalize, you know, uh, living, daycare, you know, stuff like that. And, um, it was canceled a few days before we went, so we turned it into a vacation, and I got to go and look at all the yarn stores, and we drove around, looked everywhere, and then we, were, after looking and seeing Colorado for the very first time, we were like, oh no, we're not going to live here, we just fell in love, and 
we're kind of sad that we weren't going to go and move there. So, um, but one of the yarn stores that I went to was in Fort Collins, which was the LBU. And they're an amazing, amazing store. Amazing store. I can't wait. Um, me and my husband are planning to go back to Colorado. I am hoping next month in July, I will, um, make you aware of me going to Colorado. I'll probably take a lot of uh, pictures. We're actually, this time we're taking the kids. Last time we did not. We've gone on little mini trips for like the weekend to Colorado, but we have not taken the kids. And I've been wanting to. I've been wanting to show them the mountains. My daughter has gone. My 13 year old daughter has gone to Colorado with her father. And um, to go and see the mountains and such, but all the other kids have not. And so we have a few things in, planned for Colorado. Thing to actually drink coffee outside where I could see a beautiful view. But we'll see how that goes and I'll let you guys know, you know, on the progress of that vacation. But, um, I did not get this colorway when I went up there. But I did go online afterwards, I think it was a few months afterwards, and I saw the screen, it was beautiful, it was perfect, and I got it. And it was take a hike, and oh, um, so I made myself some fingerless gloves. As I said, uh, probably in previous um, episodes, um, or probably in the very first episode, I love designing stuff. I it's just, I like the process of doing it. I never go and put, uh, put my designs out. I don't know why I should uh, the whole um, I could create a pattern the whole grading and making your pattern fit every size is what stops me from putting my patterns out um, <clears throat> because I'd, I will do math to go and create a pattern so that I can knit it But I will not do the math to make it to 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 be able to do different sizes. I don't I don't know why. I just it's I stop there. But these are my snake skin gloves. I made them pretty tight because I wanted them to be skin tight. Um and of course I made I'm naming them snake skin because of the pattern that I have. And then I believe the ribbing was a seed stitch ribbing. Made them into fingerless gloves. But there you go. Now, the other glove, Dream in Color, is an indie dyer. They're uh, a bigger indie dyer. Uh, they do hand dye their yarns. And as you can see, this was a clear example of a colorway not being extremely uh, consistent throughout the whole skein um which is something that happens with indie dyers it's just, it's it's unavoidable um you know every indie dyer will do everything that they can to make it consistent and a lot of, you know there's several techniques on how to do that uh but you do every so often get those skeins that are not going to be perfect and consistent throughout the whole skein and this was one of them and me, I don't really mind because I know the troubles that indie dyers have. And second, it just it doesn't really bother me so much because I like unique things and they don't have to be completely perfect. But as you see, there are two different colors. <laughs> Not two different different colors, but two different tones and shades. And of course, I knit these two at a time because I like doing things two at a time because I have second sock syndrome. I have to do things two at a time or I will never complete the second object. As my husband knows, I made him some socks years and years ago for uh, when we first went out together, when we, we weren't even married yet and I was making him socks and I made him the first sock and I didn't do the next sock until like a year or two later. Of course, he never let me live, he will never let me live that down. But I finally found, you know, finished the second sock. 
but ever since then I never just do one unless I absolutely have to so I knit these two at a time and of course that is the one of the reasons why um, it came out two different colors because I knit one from the middle from the center of the ball and one from the outside of the ball and of course they came out two colors this is one of the reasons why indie dyers and for just hand dyed yarns uh, it is preferred and a good idea to go and knit if you have two skeins it's great to knit you know a couple rows with one skein a couple rows with the other skein or if you only have one ball like I did to go and knit a couple rows from the center a couple rows from the outside and which is something I should have done and I know I should have done it but then again I was trying to do two at a time socks and I was like how in the world am I going to do that already using both ends of the, of the yarn you know so I was like yeah it's okay I'll be fine with this actually I actually probably have enough to make myself another pair of gloves and they probably will turn out like one will be a little lighter one will be a little darker so it'll probably work out perfect I don't know I might keep them the same or the way they are and not not um knit another pair of gloves I actually might knit myself some ankle socks because I probably I think it would be cool to go and have matching hands and feet in green so and I love this I love this color of course you know it's green I love it I love the colorway that's why I got it so there you go I have to go and weave in the ends which is the reason why I'm showing it to you now I have to weave in the ends because I still have ends so that I can actually wear these gloves this summer or th this summer this winter all right the other thing that I need to go and do or weave in the ends is my husband's socks because it's still I still have not uh, weaved in the ends um, those are on my list the other thing that's on my list of course for um, my daughter's cow that I have not weaved in the ends as well there we go Oof. that was a lot I have a lot to do and not enough time to do it uh, but slow season starting to come around uh, we'll see if it gets slow we'll see if it doesn't uh, we'll see um, there is one thing okay so um, I showed you my whips the knitting whips that I'm doing there is another uh, spinning thing that I'm doing on my spin diary and that will that video will come later I am knitting or I'm spinning knitting I'm spinning another one of um, combo spins from the spinning box similar to this one but it's going to be a blue purple green color and I can show you a little bit of what I've done so far I've already stripped down the fibers um, in the order that I want to do or I want them to be spun somewhat most of them so gonna start with this one then I am going to go and spin um, some carded uh, well, let me just go and show you okay so I am going to I haven't done this as of yet but I am going to card these three together I'm also going with those with that carded fiber I'm either going to make um, trolls hair which my my daughters have coined it trolls hair because it looks like a trolls head or I'm going to make them into Rolex because I haven't done that with my hand carters yet and I love doing new things and things I haven't done before and new techniques and da 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 so I might actually do that um, but I'm gonna spin this one then I'll spin the carded fiber then I'll spin this one then I'll spin the carded fiber 
and then I'll do this beautiful soft alpaca then I'll do the this one which is one of my favorite colors or then I'll do the the carded fiber this one and then carded fiber or carded fiber then this one and then carded fiber <laughs> Um, that's how that's as much as I've done so far I have it carded the fiber that's up next I just haven't had the time um, um and I got fiber on me but that's one thing there was another thing that I was thinking about doing I kind of stopped myself from starting to spin this because I really do want to get further along with um, my spinning box one I just showed you but I can show you what I'm planning to do because this will come down the road of what I want to do and this of course I showed you when I got this at the Fiber Fest it is I believe 50% merino top and 50% tinsel in this beautiful colorway which I'm not sure if it's named nope but it's from Enchanted Fibers. I got it at Fiber Fest on the Enchanted Fibers uh, booth. And I want to spin a fairly thin yarn from this. I'm not sure if it's going to be a single or a two ply. I don't think I want to do any anything else uh, more than a two ply. So it'll be either a single or a two ply, one or the other. I want to, and I've been thinking about doing a uh, adding beads to it, because um, I've not never done that technique before. And uh, you'll learn this about me. I love learning new things. I love trying things out, and and even if it's just a sample, I will do it just because I want to learn how to do it. Um, it's like lock spinning. I want to learn how to lock spin. Um, it's on my bucket list of things to do. Um, I haven't learned it yet just because I have so many other things that I'm that are right before it. Um, but um, I don't know if I'll ever knit anything that has locks in it. But maybe once I spin it, because I've never knit anything with, <laughs> with locks on it. But maybe once I spin it, I will you know, be excited and it'll make my creative juices flow and I'll find something that I want to knit with it. But this is what I'm thinking about doing is adding beads to my spin, ooh, to my spin. And these are the two beads that I'm thinking about doing. And one is very shiny. Let's see if we can go and get you to see. It's not the best of pictures, but you could get the idea of what the beads, beads are like. I'm thinking about adding this. I wasn't sure if these were too pink for this mauve ness in this roving. And I was either and I was thinking about these ones which have a matte pearl type finish to the beads. So they're not clear, they're not very shiny, they're more of a matte finish. And I was thinking about either or I'm not sure which ones or do both and just interchangeably um, add the pink and then add the white to this. I was also thinking about adding some Angelina into this. So I'm, I'm doing a lot here and I'm not even sure how I'm going to do it because I can use my carters to go and add the Angelina to it and get a good blend of Angelina in the Viber. But I'm not sure if I really want to go and card this roving or if I just want to go and spin from the top and see how it turns out. Which I've done with a lot of rov roving that I've done in the past, just spin from the top. I've also split a lot of things. I've also done a lot of different kinds of fiber prep to my rovings and bats and such. So I'm st that's still in the works. I'm still thinking about it. I'm still finalizing my um, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it. Um, but the facts are I want to add beads and I want to learn how to do that technique. I want it to be either a single ply or a two ply, fairly thin yarn, and hopefully with glitter. <laughs> um, 
I still have or, or shininess glitter shininess um I haven't figured out if I'm going to use which uh Stellina I'm going to use or Angelina I'm going to use so I have the forest blaze so I'm going to do a little sample and see which one I like best um I'm the green is throwing me off I just don't know if the green is going to not make the end product looked as desirable as I want it to be. So I'm gonna do a little sample before I do the whole roving and then heat it at the end. Or I wanna do the charcoal colorway that I have, which I sh which is basically gray, charcoal -y color. Um, it has little, um, you can see a little bit of green and very little hints of like a reddish. So this might mesh with it better, but this one is a nice rose red color with green. And I wanna see and I wanna try to see if it meshes well with it. So that's what I'm planning so far. Um, yeah, that is everything today. It's a little bit of a lot actually. It was a lot more than I thought it would be considering that I've been so busy that I haven't been able to do a lot of knitting or as much knitting as I would like. But then again, I haven't done the video. Um, um, I waited a little bit until I did the video just to make sure I had content to show you. But thank you. Thank you so much for joining me here today again. I so appreciate everybody who leaves comments, who watches my videos, who reaches out to me. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you could go and email me at serenityfibers1. Um, at gmail.com. I also have um, Serenity Fibers on Ravelry. I also have a Ravelry group, Serenity Fibers. I would love it if you would join. I don't have a lot of people on there. I'm trying to get more people to go and join the Ravelry group so that later on we can actually do fun things together, knit things, do some it's, do some cows, um, maybe even some Ravelry giveaways, stuff like that. Uh, so please join my group take a look also serenity fibers at on Instagram as well, but That's everything. Well, thank you so much for joining me today Or I so enjoy doing these videos and these podcasts podcasts for you um, But thank you again, and I'll see you next time